Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 1D of Fundamental Applied Mathematics. It's on page 29. Uh, just before I, before I start, I'd encourage you to subscribe to my videos if you find them useful. Uh, and if uh, if you're doing Applied Maths, you might tell others that are doing it. It's, a, it's quite a small course and I'd hope to think that this, this these sets of videos will be useful first. So yeah, hopefully subscribe and uh, pass it on to other people as well. So question 4 anyway is what we're doing at the moment. And uh, you can look at it yourself if you want, but I'm just going to start going straight into it by drawing the diagram that you're given in the question. So we draw our x-axis, we draw our y-axis, and they together make what? Our xy plane, I'm sure you've heard me say that at many times this stage, or your Cartesian plane. And I'm going to define my unit vectors down here this time. Okay, and I'm going to use my squiggly lines just for the crack this time. J. Once again, remember, these are unit vectors, so they usually have a little hat on top like that, I hat and J hat. So anyway, we're given three vectors, S, R, and T, such that, the following, such that we get, this is 40 degrees, I know I didn't draw 40 degrees, but you know, it's just this just for clarity. This is R, we're given T at 20 degrees. And we have S. S is at what? It's at 58 degrees. And they're going to make they're going to make that nice and awkward for us. All right. Yeah, that looks reasonably uh, reasonably neat. Now we're given the following in the in the question as well: the magnitude of S. Remember that means the magnitude, the length of its hypotenuse. If you want to think about it that way is equal to the magnitude of R is equal to 10 units and the magnitude of T is equal to 11 units. Well what does that mean? Like I said, the magnitude of the vector, its length or its hypotenuse if you want to look at it in terms of a triangle or its, unit, its component vectors. Okay, so it means 10, sorry, it means T is 11 units means that S and R are 10 units like this. Alright, that's something you should be seeing plenty at this stage. It's quite straightforward. Now we're asked to find the sum of S plus R plus T. How do you do that? Well, we do the same thing we've always done. We make our component unit vectors, component unit vectors like this, or we, uh, we drop our perpendiculars. Loads of ways of doing it. Um, and yeah, I suppose it's going to get a bit. It's going to get a bit messy in here. So I'll do as many of them I can in this one here. And to go through it very quickly, look at previous videos and especially my tutorial videos where I've gone a lot slower. But this one here is 11 sine 20. This one here. I'm going to rub out my uh, unit vector definitions just because things are getting a bit clotted. 11 cosine of 20. This one here is. 10 times, now it's opposite of 40, sine of 40. Right, now I'm going to move this vector down here. And that's 10 times the cosine of 40. Like that. Alright, similarly up here, this one here is opposite 58, so we have 10 times the sine of what? 58. And move this vector up here. Make sure we have the correct direction. And we have 10 times the cosine of 58. Right, nothing mad there at all. So we're asked to find the following. We're asked to find, I'm going to call it vector A, is equal to uh, R plus S plus T. Now remember again that you can add vectors provided they're facing the same direction. So let's look at our diagram. Now, so when I say, sorry, facing the same direction, I mean that they are in the same dimension. And I have a video on dimensions if that's, if they, if this is confusing you or new to you. So look that up if you're getting a bit confused. And look, I put the direction on that one incorrect. Fix that now. Right, so this vector here is facing upwards. This vector here is facing, uh, we'll say to the left as you look. How do you know? Because if you add the two together, you'll get that direction of S. Similarly here, this is up, this is uh, across to the right. And also, this one here is down, and this one here is to the to the left. 
Alright, this should be pretty familiar to you at this stage. I'm hoping if it's not, please put a comment or ask me to go through it in a separate video again and I'll do it in a good bit of detail, nice and slow. So, to get the vector A, which is R plus S plus T, where we add all the I's and we add all the J's. Now, because we have a lot of stuff here, I'm actually just going to add all the I's separately. So, we have what? We have, well, R. Like, I'll write them down. I'll write them down first. R is equal to... R is equal to what? Actually, you know something? I'm just going to get rid of this. It's getting in the way. I'm not really happy with that. My thing's getting in the way. Oh, so we start over here. R. R is equal to... 10 cos 40 in the i hat direction. That's its magnitude, but it's in negative i hat because remember, remember the signs. Plus plus uh, minus plus minus minus and plus minus. So this one is in this quadrant here, where we both have negative and negative. So same again. So we're going to go negative 10 uh, cos 40. Negative 10 sine 40. What did I leave out? Well, of course, I left out my unit vectors. Like that, accidentally. Right, S. Oh, that could be, I said I'd go for squiggly lines today. S is in what quadrant? It's in the negative i hat and positive j hat quadrant. So, let's go do that. It's equal to negative i hat, so it's negative 10 times the sine of 58 plus... 10 times the sine, wrong, the, uh, it's the i hat direction, sorry, that's, that should be cosine, that should be cosine, excuse me, this is sine of 58, j hat, i hat, and finally the vector t is equal to plus and plus in terms of the quadrant, so it's 11 cosine of 20 i hat, plus 11 times the sine 20 j hat. Huh? Alright, now in order to add s plus r plus t, well you add all the ones that are facing in the i hat direction and you add all the ones that are facing the j hat direction. Now I don't really have the space to do it, so uh, I'm going to do it slowly if I can. So we'll say, we'll talk about um, r in the i hat direction. is equal to minus 10 cos 40 minus 10 cos 58 plus 11 cos 20 in the i-hat direction. Similarly for the, the, the in the j-hat direction What do we have? We have a uh, large open bracket. Alright, that should be quite straightforward for you. And it's basically a case of working out uh, literally the magnitude of this, or whatever number that, that adds to, the magnitude of this. We'll say that number equals A, and that number equals B. And then you'd have the following answer. You would have something along the lines of, you would have an answer. Answer which you're well used to at this stage of like S plus R plus T is equal to A, I hat plus B J hat. So I'm just going to check to see if the book actually worked this out itself. So yeah, it's minus 2.6 I and 5.8 J. Minus 2.6 I hat plus 5.8 J hat. I'm just going to have a look at that in my calculator to see if we're correct. I, 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 uh, I'll just put that up there. I suggest you do this yourself as well. So just give me a moment. Minus 10 times the cos of 40 plus wrong minus 10 times the cos of 58 
plus 11 times the cos of 20. Yep, minus 2.6, so that's correct. And then for the j hat, minus 10 times the sine of 40, plus 10 times the sine of 58, plus 11 times the sine of 20, gives me an answer of 5.81. So there, this answer here is what the book gives, and is in actual fact correct. And that's how you do that. So once again, please subscribe to my video, pass it on to other people as well, and uh, thanks for watching.